to GH Mix Mix. Today we are touching on a very, very interesting subject. Ganja marijuana. Yes, in Ghana. Who knew? By the way, my name is Kwesi, the son back when I'm your host. Let's let, let's talk about this subject. A while ago, a couple days ago, in the course of the week, a very good friend of mine um, sent me a link to a story in which the, and I really hate to do this, I hate calling this guy the pseudo prime minister of Ghana, and I hate contributing to that, you know, narrative that may even get to his head and make him feel like he actually is. But somehow, Ghana has become used to reacting to these guys' tweets. So, here we go. But yes, Gabi Ochidaku made a tweet about marijuana. And all of a sudden, Ghana is talking about the ganja. Including people, foot soldiers, that I knew, I know very well, I knew had, had nothing to do with ganja at all. Started defending ganja on Facebook and stuff like that. Started calling for, you know, the, the future of the country is in the hands of marijuana, whatnot. Oh, wow. We knew all this before. Anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But hear what? Many years ago, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, as a student in the University of Ghana, I came across this book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. I was completely enthralled by the volume of information that this book presented on marijuana, the benefits, the you know, economic benefits, health benefits, so all different types of benefits. As Rasta people, those, those times, as Rastafari those times, we made noise. We made everybody who would listen aware that no, there's something wrong going on. What we call Obonsam Tower is not Obonsam Tower, it's probably Nyankupon Tower. So we should, we should really take a closer look, right? After all, the book of Genesis says, and I know a lot of Ghanaians are Christian and adhere to the Bible, that we should use green herbs for our food and for our medicine. So how did marijuana all of a sudden become Obonsam Tower? But for some reason, yes. For a very long time in Ghana, it's been seen as Obosam Tower. Now, all of a sudden, Gabi Ochidaku says, Oh, let's look at that because it holds some potential. And yes, everybody's jumping up, including some of my people. But wait, should we be that excited? No, we should not. And let me tell you why. First of all, how many people have suffered for the cause or just for the simple reason of of using marijuana. How many people has the state jailed and destroyed their lives because they used marijuana? So now all of a sudden, if you're going to say, oh yeah, well, good, you know, it's, it's, it's good, then what about these people? What do we do with them? What about those who are currently in prison for marijuana-related offenses? Gabby, do you have an answer to that? Is your proposal going to be broad enough to cover all these things? Well, I have some few, you know, um, suggestions that we could share. But before we get there, let us look critically at this thing though, right? Should marijuana be legalized in Ghana under the current circumstances? I say no, and here is why. I also heard some time ago that, um, Ghana had legalized marijuana for medicinal purposes and whatnot. So I was like, whoa, okay, all right. But look closely. Are people still being arrested for marijuana in Ghana or not? Yes, they are. Are people still being prosecuted for marijuana-related charges? Yes, they are. So who did they legalize it for? And that is where the catch is. People, listen closely. And especially when it involved Gabi or Tredako, my yes pick up okay because there is some history I know what I'm talking about there is some history okay now look at this 
Marijuana has been legalized on a commercial basis in Ghana, but the citizens are not benefiting from that. How many Ghanaians have a license to grow marijuana? Ghanaian marijuana is green gold on the world market. So I hear. Yeah, you can. You know? No, but seriously, they're very serious now, though. Ghanaian, Ghanaian marijuana must be great. In Konya, marijuana is fantastic. I hear. You know? In Soko. And all of that. But who has a license? Which Ghanaian has a license to grow marijuana in Ghana? I don't know anybody. I know some people who have been chasing the license and they don't even know where to start. But I can bet you my last bottom password that somebody, some foreigner, has a license to grow marijuana in Ghana. With the support of some government officials. So now they want to make it legal so that they will bring in their cronies to grow marijuana and export while Ghanaians still continue to go to jail for smoking one row, as we call it, one row. Ghana, for Mumei and Kabio, this is pure foolishness. Don't get excited about this Gabio uh, Chida who wants to legalize ganja nonsense. No. No, it's a trap. Okay, let's say they want to do it. Fine, let's do it. If we want to do it, then let's do it properly. Okay? Because we're not going to sit down and have some foreigners come in and have some Ghanaian people front for them to grow marijuana just like our oil and our everything else and take it to the outside market and sell and make tons of money whilst the indigents continue to suffer under repressive laws, stupid laws. Stupid laws that put people in jail for years because they smoke one split. It's stupid and we said this to you way back when we were reading The, 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 the Emperor Wears No Clothes. Gabi Ochidaku was nowhere at the time. Maybe he was, but he didn't show his face. If you are going to legalize ganja for people to grow and make money, what happens to the family of Chikulai? I never met Chikulai, but Chikulai was, was immortalized in a song back, back in the day when I used to go to Afro-Caribbean and all them things there, you know? Chukulai, who was a good brother, who used to sell ganja in Aveno. Apparently, police went to Aveno and gunned down people for smoking and selling weed. Now we want to legalize it. So what happens to his family? What happens to the families of all the people who are in jail? Let's, ha let's look at some solutions. Let's, look at, let, let's not beat this thing too hard, you know? Similar things. You know, other countries have legalized it. So let's not reinvent the wheel. If we want to legalize it, let's follow common sense procedures. Common sense, you, you know, um, um, outlines for common sense outcomes. Simple as that. Other countries have done it. We can look at it too. When Ghana struck oil, the good people in government at the time sent people to Norway and all different types of places to learn and study how best to, um, um, you know, make the industry work. Unfortunately, I don't even know if... Uh, we're not talking about oil, we're talking about ganja. So right now, what I'm saying is this. We can look at some best practices in some places and apply it if we want to do this. And the first of, 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 of these things is the reparation aspect of it. The very first step should be to compensate the people who have been brutalized for years. Years and years and years. Ghana Narcotics Board, Ghana Police, this, Ghana Police, brutalized innocent people. Watch this video. We'll come right back. Watch this video. And that's what I'm talking about. All this gentleman did was smoke weed to go to his farm to go and work hard for Mother Ghana. And the police, in the name of the law, 
dehumanize and degrade him like this. And now the politicians want to come back and legalize it and make money for themselves. No, that is, that, that, that's, that's a travesty. That is complete travesty. Listen, like I said, if we want to do this, the first thing we have to do is to compensate the people who have suffered for marijuana. And the U.S. is doing a similar thing. I'll read you something from the New York Times, okay, really quick, from the state of New York. I love the state of New York for so many different reasons, and this is one of them. Okay, so according to the NYT, right, the state, the New York State will soon announce plans to usher in its first outlets for retail sales of marijuana by the end of the year, giving applicants access to stockpiles of the drug grown by local farmers and offering sweetness like new storefronts leased by the state. So watch this. First and foremost, locals are growing the marijuana employment. All the people who are hanging around the corners being considered criminals because they are selling weed to go eat are now fully employed doing the same thing they were being chased for. So Gabi, you're right, but well, we're going to do this right. We're not going to let you and your cronies take advantage of us. Follow me. The only catch, to be one of the state's first licensed retailers, you or a member of your family must have been convicted of a marijuana-related offense. And that's the catch. Let's compensate those who have suffered under these stupid laws with licenses. If they don't want it, fine. Or they could take it and sell it or whatever, pass it on or whatever. But they should have the first choice, the first option, the first leases, the first role of licenses should go to people who have been imprisoned for marijuana before or to their families, especially to families like Chukulai who was gunned down for selling ganja and now the politicians want to sell the same ganja. I think it's only fair. Follow me. The policy to be announced by Governor Kitty Hoko on Thursday is part of a concerted push to assure that early business owners in the state projected in the state's projected billion dollar marijuana industry will be members of communities that have been affected. Communities, you see now, they're taking it from the individual who has been to prison to communities because Let's face it, just like in the United States, in Ghana, there are communities that have suffered more than others. People used to smoke weed in East Legon, and the police didn't go there to go chase them. They would go to Anumle, which is just around the corner. They would go to Aveno and gun down Chukulai. Okay, so if we're going to do this, let us look at communities like that and, and give licenses in those areas this is such a brilliant plan okay and that's what I'm saying we don't have to reinvent the, the wheel at all it's been done before and it's working and remember it says it's a billion dollar industry the government is running to IMF for how many how many billion dollars marijuana is a billion dollar industry but if we don't do it right all the money is going to go to cronies People will just come and use our land and grow the marijuana and go and sell it and go and then we'll still be here going to jail for marijuana. <laughs> In favoring those with marijuana convictions and prepping their businesses for turnkey sales, New York appears to be trying to avoid pitfalls encountered in some other states which have been designated social equity applicants and other mom and pop marijuana businesses struggle with issues like capital or competition from deep-pocketed corporate operations. It's like this article was written just for this show, bro. Like, every point I want to make is in here, right? Listen, it says, in favoring those with marijuana convictions, the prepping, and sorry, in favoring those with marijuana convictions and prepping their businesses for 10 key sales, New York appears to be trying to avoid pitfalls encountered in some other states 
which have seen designated social equity applicants and other home and pop marijuana businesses struggle with issues like lack of capital or competition from deep pocketed corporate operations. And that is what I am anticipating and that's what I'm sounding the alarm about. Because if you're not careful, we will make noise about legalizing ganja, support it, back it, and then before we realize, we can't even afford the licenses to grow it. And deep pocketed multinational co companies from China and, and, and the United States and from all of our different other places, who, and Europe and, and all of that, even from other places, you know, like so called third world countries, will come over there and use us and we will get nothing. We can't do that. We can't do that. But listen, the whole point I'm making is this. People have suffered for the ganja. People have been jailed for the ganja. People have died for the ganja. And people continue to die, be harassed, for the ganja and now here comes this thief among them one come thief with again before our bare eyes these guys are tricksters bro like listen <laughs> the first option for licenses in Ghana for growing marijuana must go to people or the families of people who have suffered under the stupid marijuana laws that Ghana continues to operate even though they want to sneak behind us and pass a law that will let other people come and grow marijuana and benefit of it. Do you remember uh, 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 Cran Cranson? What was his name? Cranson? Something like that. Cranson. I think his name was. He was a former um, head of the... Of the uh, Phew, the Narcotic Control Board, the Narcotics Control Board. I forget what his name, I think it was called Cranston, something like that. But you remember what he said some years ago? He said, listen, let us legalize the ganja because the resources that we are using to fight marijuana makes no sense. There are harder problems, harsher problems that we have to deal with. And we're spending the resources chasing after people who only go to, listen, I went, to, I went to a certain uh, town in Ghana some time ago, you know, and when these people saw, me, yo, listen, if you live in Ghana, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a Rasta man, you are a star, bro. Like one day, I was walking with a, a colleague of mine, a, a journalist from Israel, you know, and we were walking through Kumasi, and everywhere we passed, people would, would say, hey, Rasta, you know, and she says, whoa. Until I, until I met you here in Ghana, everywhere I went, people called me. People said, oh, Brony, <laughs> right? Now I'm walking with you and everybody's calling you. Like, what's going on there? You know, but I'm just saying this to make the point that the Rasta man knows what he's talking about. Okay? People may mock us. They may tease us. They may say all different types of things to us, call us names, misrepresent what we're saying, whatnot. But listen closely, because over 20 years ago, we were saying to you what Gabi Ochedako is paraphrasing to you now. And he's still he's doing that with ulterior motives, unlike the, the us who were saying that. It makes no sense to do listen. Listen, let's just do this. As a state, as a nation, right? We take our youth, the young people, the fresh blood. The people who are coming to build the nation, who are ready and poised to build the nation. And then we take them because they smoked one roll and put them in jail for years, feed them with state resources, and then when they come out, they are ex convicts who have a blemish both on their record and on their personal. The, the, their sense of being. So now they cannot go out in the job market and easily fit in. 
I met somebody in Ghana who had who had a certificate from the prison because he said he had learned to lay bricks in the prison. They make you feel like, yeah, they do that. Yeah, they do that. But how many people would employ somebody who shows them a certificate with Ghana prison service on it? So now you destroy the, the lives of these people. Only for you to come back and say, oh, marijuana crampo is good, though. let's legalize it. Well, fine. Hallelujah, Paul. On your way to Damascus, you found the truth. But what about all the people that you've persecuted? Are you ready to say sorry? You have the opportunity to give them the first option for the licenses. And Ghana, until we see that, do not support any idiot legalized ganja campaign. Because it has to come from the right source. If you are going to legalize it, we have to legalize it for our benefit. Not legalize it to benefit others. I think that's the summary of what I'm saying. So my point is made, I'm going to go. But let me make sure that every point is, is still done, you know. Before I go though, let me give a few ideas. As somebody who has been following this subject for a very long time, it's only not normal that I will have a few ideas. Let me share some of them. Government should partner with citizens in this, in this, in this business. Okay, government should make a concerted effort to partner with individuals to make this a successful industry. I went to Detroit some time ago. I was a guest of you know some bur some virgin in, in Detroit a while ago. Detroit had legalized marijuana, and I was standing on the curb with people smoking, and the cops were just passing and. And at the time, Detroit had a lot of crime before that happened, right? Now, you would see people, it was so calm, the, 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 the police, you know, high-fiving, you know, like V-signing, people smoking weed and everything. It was just cool. But the government actually gave licenses to people who already know how to do these things. Tell it. Let's look at it like this. All the money that people sell ganja and put in their pocket, the government should could be making a part, a part of it all as tax, rather than using state resources to fight it and jail people. Go down the channel. Appetition was the same thing. The government fought up the British colonial in those times. They fought Appetition, and now Appetition is everywhere. Now they are pouring ancestors' libation with Appetition. Maybe one day we'll pull ancestors' libation with some spliff too, you know. But gov government should partner, partner um, 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 uh, the citizenry. We can set up neighborhood stores where ganja can be legally acquired. Now let me tell you the benefit of that. That will prevent illegal use, used by minors. Okay, because we are very nervous about that. Full disclosure. I do not endorse minors using marijuana. Research has shown that the, the mind needs to develop, the brain needs to develop to a certain point where it can receive the signals that, you know, the ganja sends to your brain. So I do not support minors using it. And if we do that, this is going to check that. This is going to check that because I know that when you go to the villages and stuff like that, people can send their kids to go buy them a petition and stuff like that. But in most places, young people a certain age cannot just walk in the store and ask for a petition. So let's do a similar thing here. Okay? Let's set up neighborhood stores with strict conventions so that kids cannot easily acquire marijuana. Alright, number two. Let's set up a system to issue licenses to both growers and retailers. And we should also space them out. All right? In America, they have this concept called the dollar store concept, where they put stores with very low prices, you know, in certain neighborhoods. And what they do is they space them out. You can't have two of them in a, in a given area. They space them out so that the competition becomes, you know, and then it benefits the, 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 the people too. So what I'm saying is the government set up a system where they issue the licenses to both retailers and growers. So we have people who have licenses to grow. President Kex, salute. How could I do this program without mentioning you, President Kex? President Kex Dampongo is one of the people who has really been on the forefront of this thing. And I'm going to have him on this show one time 
maybe the next episode to shed more light on, on the work he has done in trying to legalize ganja in Ghana. President Tex is now going to get the credit and Gabi Ochedapun is going to get the credit for legalizing ganja in Ghana. Travesty that. Anyways, let's use 15% of the profits as assembly income so that the money stays in the community. 15% of all the taxes collected on the ganja should be given back to the community, to, to the assembly. The community, you know, to use in developing the community itself. Build um, 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 sports facilities, build clinics, build water systems, build drainage, build something. Give the money back to the people. 15%, maybe more. Hey, 15% is what I think, you know, is my rough guesstimate would make sense. You can decide whatever percent you want, but it should be a minimum of 15%, I think. Right? Okay, the next point. Invest in sports and other recreational facilities to engage the youth so that they don't turn smoking itself into an activity. Okay? They're smoking for recreational purposes and whatever. People drink for recreational purposes, so if people want to smoke for recreational purposes, I don't see why not. However, like I said, we don't want our youth to be like hooked on smoking as an activity. Okay? No Rasta man smokes as an activity. Rasta people smoke for as a sacred as a, as, as, as a sacred right or to help their bodies in one way or the other. They don't just burn and rock. You know? And so that's what we're saying. So as not to have a menace of a generation of people who only think of smoking and, 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 and walking. Let's have things, other things which will engage them. So let's use the 15% for that. Build sports facilities and all that, those type of things, right? Have an annual international ganja fest. Okay, come on, tell me. Brahmima idea. And stop the nonsense with funeral tourism. Nonsense. Ganja fest. How about that? How about branding Ghanaian ganja, which is already making trends out there? As, oh, Charlie, we have the best thing. Oh, how about coming over here for a whole week to sample our ganja? It's an international event. People come from all over the world just to smoke our weed and feel good about it and buy some. And, and not just the weed, though, people. Let's be clear. We don't have time to go into everything. But marijuana can be used in so many different ways. Cookies, clothes, ropes, all of that. Have a whole assembly of all of that and let people come and shop. And and, 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 and and have some tourism money, you know? We could actually combine that with, with, with chocolate, golden tree chocolate. Just check that, because what you what I'm telling you, like, everybody knows this. Like, people who smoke marijuana know that it boosts your appetite. And it gives you, like, a sweet mouth type of thing, you know? So we have ganja, and then we have golden tree chocolate. You're born a split, you eat a chocolate. That, no. Charlie, let's get practical rather than wait for people with parochial interest to come and start telling us what we've known for over 30 years. Just imagine Ghanaian ganja, Ghanaian chocolate, Ghanaian music. One week. One solid week of, you know, rampy day. You know? Featuring all these things. Imagine how much money we would make. If we know that there's one big festival coming up, all the ganja growers will spend their time growing and they'll grow their best ones too. And then the processors will process into all different type of things too. And the platform will be there for the musicians to go and shine on the stage too. And the golden tree too will be there for what? Yo, listen man. And how about have the best ganja farmer award? Yes, because that would definitely be a way to improve on the quality. Long story short, I'm about to leave, but what I'm saying is this. Ghana, legalize it is a good message, but no one is coming from W.O. Chidako because he does not have the best interest of the ordinary people at heart. If he does, let him prove it. 
and let's all demand that the first wave of leases and licenses should be given to people who have suffered or to the families of people who have suffered under the stupid, stupid, stupid and obnoxious marijuana laws that still operate in Ghana while we want to legalize and make money for the people who are already rich. So, I guess what I'm saying is this. If there's any credit to be made from ganja, it should be for the indigenous people of Ghana, not for foreign investors. If there's any claim to fame for suggesting the legalization of marijuana, it should be for people like President Kex and Ahuma Basco and a whole litany of other people that I can mention, but for the want of time. But definitely not for Gabi Ochi Daku. My name is Prisci Son Baku. I come in peace. I come not to please. I'll see you next episode. Thank you and goodbye.